Okay, so I have this non-destructive overlay layer. If I set it to normal, you can see that it's in the shape of my creature, and I just started to dodge it a little bit, which would brighten those, those spots. So there's just a little bit of highlight you know, on the top of the head that I'm adding. I'm still on the dodge shell. I want to add that to the top of the wings because this environment, you know, if these cake pops and these candies are all lit from above, then my creature is also lit from above. And it's a really safe way to edit because it's only changing from middle gray. So the most I can do is take middle gray to white. <laughs> but then it's just going to apply that to my creature underneath. So where else might it hit? The highlights. Let's see. At the tip of the wings, for sure. Now if you push it too far, like I'm starting to do, you might lose pixel definition. And remember, that's why we can always use opacity on this non-destructive overlay layer to decide how much is the right amount. All right. Maybe a little bit more brightness on this side. Maybe just a touch on the leg to catch it. A little on the back of the head and then through the ears. Just the mid-tones. So I have a lot of dodging that I did. Now let's try the burning. Where do the shadows need to be deepened? Maybe under the chin? Because again, if it's a directional lighting, you know, from the top, then everything underneath is going to get a little darker. The toes will get a little darker in the shadow. The underarms. I might brighten up the eye a little bit with dodging. Now, does the sponge tool do anything in a non-destructive dodge burn overlay layer? It doesn't, because all you're doing is changing middle gray. And because middle gray doesn't have a color, you can't saturate it or desaturate it. Black and white are not colors, they are values. All right. So now, the lighting is working a lot better than it was. You can see the difference on the creature. And we've got that shadow underneath. But I want to knock back that cake pot a, pop a little bit so that the chicken wing stands out. And so I can try it by burning the, uh, the overlay layer more on the setting. And that does help, but it is limited to just the highlights, or to the midtones rather. So if I want to burn those highlights on the cake pop, I will have to go to the cake pop layer itself, and then burn it directly on that layer. And that's because non-destructive overlay protects and won't let you push it too far. So if you need to push it further, you can go to the layer itself. But I'm actually going to show you, I don't want to do that with a setting on the midtones. I actually want to burn the highlights. And I just got to do that a little bit on that cake pot to get the wing to stand out in front of it. All right. Okay, now I'm almost done. I've almost done everything I can to make this creature match this environment. But there's one super helpful trick that I've shown some of you that really helps blend everything together. And this is called a texture overlay. So we've done non-destructive dodge burn overlays. 
Did one for my creature. If I set it to normal mode, it looks like this. And we did one for the setting, which if I set it to normal, looks like this. And you can see all the dodges and burns that go on. And then I set them to a slightly less than 100% opacity. One's at 88, one's at 82. I angled my creature's anatomy to fit. So what can I do with what's called a texture overlay? I can go to Pixabay and composite in some atmosphere, some air to breathe. If I just put in cloud, I get this beautiful right away. It's so commonly used. You can use any kind of clouds. Maybe I'll use a different one than the one that I always use. There's 1,300 pages of clouds. But what you want is something that's just vague and soft. It's just a cloud texture. Without too many hard edges. So for instance, because my background has these kind of mountain clouds, I can use this. I'm going to download it to the second to the largest because I'm not logged in. And you're going to see it doesn't matter if it's, if it's a large resolution or not. Then I'm going to bring it in and I'm going to stretch it to cover my whole image. I can even warp it so that that cloud is covering everything. This is what's called a texture overlay. It's a way of blending things in. It's why in special effects movies, when the dinosaur shows up, it also happens to be dark and rainy because this kind of atmospheric texture really helps. The simplest way to use a texture overlay is to just take the opacity way down. And all of a sudden, now I've got atmosphere. And it's sitting behind my foreground. But let's go ahead and put it on top of everything, even my foreground. Now I'm going to rasterize it. And I'm going to crop it to fit my image so I don't waste a lot of memory. But here is the beauty of a texture overlay. That mist can be used to blend colors, to obscure, and because I rasterize it, I can use my eraser at a low opacity, soft edged, really big. I'm going to do like a thousand pixels. And in the foreground, I can push the mist away. And on my creature, I can push the mist away a little bit so it stands out. But in the shadows, I'm going to leave that mist a little heavier. So what does that look like at 100% opacity? Like this. Kind of pushing and pulling this atmosphere and then taking down its opacity until you're happy with it. I just went to a uh, music concert last night and they always use smoke machines, right? Always, yes. Alison Russell, I'm even a bigger fan of. Yes. But why do they use smoke machines? Just because everything kind of looks a little bit easier to look at, everything looks blended together, everything's a little bit more enjoyable when it has like a haze around it. It's like the Vaseline on the lens of a soap opera. So that's what a texture fill can do for you. Here's the other beautiful trick for a texture fill. You can also do image adjustments on it. So I can go to levels now and I can make this mist darker, like it's evening, ooh, twilight. 
sparkle brighter early morning. Right? Just pushing the mid-tones of it. What helps? I can play with the color of it by using color balance and pushing it warmer. And now everything is warmer, cooler. Everything is cooler. This is all with the texture overlay. So you bring it in from a big reference of clouds. I'll tell you the most common one is you just, designers use it all the time because you can't tell, is this one. <laughs> it's already grayscale so that you can make it any color you want just by using colorize under hue saturation. But you can see the difference it makes. And it really helps to blend everything together. For those of you who are painters, especially oil painters, this is glazing. It's kind of glazing over everything with a transparent coat of the same thing. That brings everything together. Do you guys agree that it helps? You just drag and drop it in. It's like compositing any layer. So, yeah, so put the cloud as the topmost layer, stretch it over everything. I'll just demo it again. So I'll download this cloud, which I use all the time. Goes to downloads. I grab it from downloads. It's over the top of everything. First thing I do is I stretch it. Doesn't matter if it softens its resolution because textures are soft anyway. To fill the space, I can warp it, I can push it. Then I take its opacity way down, right? And I get this mist with natural variations. Then I rasterize it. And to save memory, I crop it. Just use the crop tool to go to your the boundaries of your landscape. And now, I'm going to use my big eraser, soft edged, very important that's soft edged, and erase away where I don't want that, that much fog. You know, I grew up in California. I was born in Germany. Uh, I l lived in Northern California. Lots and lots of fogs <laughs> in both those places, whether it's the the forest fog in Germany, whether it's the coastal fog in California, and it obscures everything. Now, you don't want it to make everything look boring like that, right? You want to decide how it can best emphasize your creature and your foreground, middle ground, background. And it's especially helping with my kind of soft focus foreground for us to look past it. Now, what if I want more cloud in one place? I can grab a bunch of it. So I can take, this is up 30%. I can take this lump of cloud, boom, and internally composite from it, duplicate. You always want to do that at 100% opacity. And now I can take that cloud and I can erase it away at the edges with 100% opacity on my eraser with a soft edge brush, right, to turn this into my own little cloud. And now I can push this anywhere I want. So if I want to obscure this corner because I don't like it so much, I can also transform it. And I can take its opacity down. And I can change its color. This is all texture overlays. I'm just going to go right to hue saturation. And really change it to be this kind of reddish warm cloud. And I can brighten it or darken it. And then at low opacity eraser, I'm just going to start pushing and pulling that, that air to help obscure. And then I can see if that helps or not. 